Yes, yeah, yeah. Thanks for letting us come and interview you. Very welcome. Very Thank welcome you. Here. First, I want to take you back to when you was younger. Yeah. Um, you know, bringing in in the Ivory Coast, you travelled. Yeah. You went to to Greece. Yeah. To Belgium, Ukraine, France, yeah. Spain, and then come to England. What was that like growing up? Oh, it's, to be honest with you, it's, it's a massive, you know what I mean? Like education, like learn how people are living in different side of the country. Yeah, if I can say that, I think I, I've been blessed in for all these years. To be young guys coming from Belgium, making his, his job, going through you know, this job, you know, and uh, succeed in this uh, difficult, difficult career of football, I think is unbelievable. That's why I said I'm blessing. I'm very happy and I'm very happy also to move around this Europe to know how people live in and have to, this facility to, to learn about different culture, you know what I mean? Mm. Has, that, has that helped you in a football sense as well, as well, playing in different countries, different leagues, especially for Europe? Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. I think, uh, to, be, to be honest with you, to be in Ukraine, Greece, after France, Spain, now in England, I think it's a massive achievement for me. It's, I've been blessed, what I'm saying, like, Thank you to, to, to Allah because I'm Muslim, you know, and uh, I think it's the things who help me grow as a person and as well as a footballer as well, you know, because around this, all this country I've been able to play, I've, I find a lot of massive good friends in there, you know, they help me growing up properly and growing up as a professional player as well, and I think uh, that's why I said I'm blessed and I'm very happy. Yeah. Do you think that would help the English players if, to go abroad more often? Sometimes it helps about education, about learning football, around yep. Europe, because it's good as well. It helps you grow as a person, and as education is very good, you know what I mean? Because, um, to tell you one I did anecdote, a couple of, a couple of yeah, last year, Mikael Richard has been, he been going you know, in Italy. Yeah, in Italy, in Fiorentina, alone. And he'd been, he been there. Last time I talked with him, chat a little bit, it was good, good, good experience for him. He, he just talking, you know, because the language is different, the culture is different, and you see different people who have their mentality, you have to adapt. And when you come back after to your own country, you realize that, you know, you, you, you think you get something different, you know, because, and after that, when those guys come to your country, you know how to, mm, to, to change with them, how you can act with them, and how you can exchange with them, and how you can, as a person, as this culture, as this mentality, as the way you behave, the way you pray as well, you always, and they're standing. Obviously, I looked at your journey, and a lot of my friends were like, "Well, you played in Ukraine, you played in in, in Greece." They, they didn't, they didn't recognize, they didn't realize. Yeah, yeah. But then you went to Barcelona. Yeah. What was it like going from from them countries, which is relatively small, yeah, to then going to Barcelona? Oh, unbelievable, unbelievable. You know, I can. It's like a dream come true because in the past, when we were young, my first thinking it was going through and the and the and, and my job like going in the top. No, in the top club or in the normal club in Europe, try to succeed, try to be to doing well, and after going one step more, and I think Barcelona for me was a massive, massive, uh, massive thing. So it happened in my life, you know. It's where I achieve everything. It's where I start to be a proper player and a good player, you know, because be around those players like Xavi, Puyol, Marquez, you know, and Valdez. Is now is in Manchester United. I think those guys helped me a lot, you know. And the past, as I've been with Turam, you know, Harry. Samuel Leto, you know, those great, great players helped me a lot, and I think it's all this massive achievement and learning from them helped me to, to grow. I was probably a good footballer, and now I'm City, I'm enjoying. So you went there, you was like a defensive midfielder yeah, when definitely. you went there. But you played various positions against Manchester yeah. United in the final. <laughs> it's a bad day for me. But, <laughs> but you played centre back against Cristiano yeah. Ronaldo, and you kind of marked him out of the game. H how was that? Yeah, it was brilliant. I don't want to mention that, you know, because <laughs> I don't want you to slap me. But <laughs> yeah, you know, Rio, you know, it was unbelievable, you know, because for me to be as honest with you, you know, yeah, on the other side, we got Messi, Samuel Leto, and Trey But I think at that time, United was, I think, unbelievable, you know. Two years in a row, win the, the Premier League, and you have a front, Rooney, Kicks, Ronaldo, Tevez, Berbatov, you know, I can have, I remember it because this two days was very tough for me, you know, because Guardiola was taking me, especially me, the four defender, because I think this time was, in the back was uh, Slovenio, Piquet, me and uh, Puyol on the right. And it was my second time playing this position and was in front of us this great player, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, any mistake, anything's wrong, I think you can begin to pay sure, you know. 
in that time, Cristiano Ronaldo was in high level, and there was, I think, totally the best. After I think after Barcelona, maybe Madrid, United was the best of four striker they have in the whole time, and for me it was was unbelievable and it was very very difficult. You know, it was difficult to enable. I think with the help of Pique and uh, Puyol to settle down, but as well. Because I'm massive and I'm physically good, I have a situation where I can read to anticipate. But I know it was quite difficult, and yeah, thank you to God, and we, we win in the end. But that leads me to the next point where you play centre back in a Champions League final. Yeah. Probably one of the best players on the pitch that day, in yeah. my opinion. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Then after that, you, you play, and before that, defensive midfielder, yeah. one of the better players at doing that. Yeah. And then you come to Manchester City and you're scoring 20 goals in, in a season. Yeah. Attacking midfielder. Yeah. I don't know any other players that, that, that have done that other than the likes of maybe Rijkaard back in the day. Yeah. How have you been able to kind of, kind of do that? Was that the help going to Barcelona, the education, Guardiola and people like that? Yeah. Or was it just natural? I think, uh, Rio, that's a good question, you know, because people have been, sometimes people have been mentioned uh, my lack of defensive situation, my lack of offensive situation, and sometimes make me love, you know what I mean, to be honest with you, because if we people, when they look my career properly, as you uh, you will see it, I've been able to play as defender, midfield, and striker. Because at, at some time, in the time of Mancini, being able to use me as second striker, you know. And I think uh, with all this experience and all this achievement and all this education I've been have it, I will not have it from from Barcelona to be around those great players, to be around this great manager like Frank Rijka, Pep Guardiola helped me a lot. For me, that's why I said I'm blessing, I'm very happy. And play in this situation, you know, as defender, as defender and the final of the Champions League, you know, is something very, very massive, you know. Any mistake you can cost to your team, any mistake can cost as well the trophies, you know. And as midfielder, defensive midfielder, always was my position when I was my normal position, I've been able to do, yeah, maybe great, yeah. But as after, Come to Manchester and do it, what I've done, I think uh, if I can say that people have been, for me, unfair. Yeah, it's a part of the game, but sometimes recognition is a very important part as well with the f professional football. Too. Yeah, definitely. Where do you see yourself most influential? Because um, when I've played against you in all them positions, I feel you're most effective when you're one of the three midfielders attacking yeah. or even the second striker. I think yeah. I feel there's more danger when you play there, where do you feel you're the best? For me, the most important thing is to help the team, you know what I mean? And be, you know, be a player who can try to push the team forward, be the player who the manager have the confidence to say, OK, today I can play here yeah, right, he's going to do the job. I can play here yeah, defender, he can do the job. He can play a striker, he can do the job. And no much of people know that about me because me, I have a type of player who can able to play a different position and try to do his best. Sometimes it's not effective or sometimes it's effective. But what I most love it is enjoy. And enjoy sometimes, you can enjoy more attacking. <laughs> you can less enjoy defensively sometimes, you know. But depend of situation, depend of the tip or where the manager wants you to settle. And sometimes, and like uh, this year, Sometimes the manager will be able to pull a little bit back. For me, for me, it's not a problem. Me, I just want to have my team, and we, it's like we, uh, with the team, we can succeed, and with the team, we can win together. And how you can see this season, the team will be together, to be in fight to each other, and uh, I think that's a great point for for for, for this year. So, what's, what is a successful season for Yaya Toure this this year? Oh, for me, the successful season. Because I have to take you back. Sorry, last season, yeah, captain of the African Nations winners. Yeah. Ivory Coast, you scored 12 goals. Yeah, yeah. You finished second, albeit yeah. behind Chelsea, and people were criticising you and criticising Man City. What is a success successful season for Yaya? Yeah, I think people have been a little bit unfair about, about me, you know, last season. But yeah, what we have to do, you know, people have his opinion, me I have my opinion, you have your opinion as well. And what I'm knowing is, I think for me, last season was the season where I achieved important things, you know, mm. best player in Africa. Winner of African Cup of Nation, finished second of the Premier League. Who is not? Yeah, Man City is a team where people expected to win, us to win with, with all this money I've been spending around. But and as well as a midfielder, finish scoring 12 goals and be to beyond that, go for two months for the African Cup of Nation. I think yeah, it's quite well. Spend two months away, 
to the Premier League. I think those two months, if you have win stay, but yeah, I can't. I don't want to say I will score mm -hmm. more goals, but people have to be a little bit, you know, realistic. Of course, you know. Mm. It looks like the criticism last season has got to you guys. It looks like <laughs> the way your eyes, the way you guys are out on the pitch now, I can, I can feel, I can sense, you want to shut everyone up. That's the way you come out at the start of this season. Uh, to be honest with you, Rio, I think, <laughs> I think, for me personally, you know, I'm a big criticism myself. You know what I mean. You know, when criticism, criticism are, are going wrong, you know, to be honest with you, I don't take it on my head, you know, because as a professional footballer, and you, you know better than me as well, because you have much experience than me, criticism, when it comes in in a good way, yeah, it's good, you know what I mean. When it comes to not help, sometimes it's difficult, but I'm not a young player now, I'm 32, I have a lot of experience, and t to tell you the true things, the criticism I go and get in my head. I'm a big, I mean, my big concern is me. Mm -hmm. When I don't well in the pitch, I know it. When I don't don't go well, I know it. And I always want to improve. Always want to to achieve things. Always wants to to show to the fans, even to the owner, I'm I'm there and I'm ready to fight for this club. You know, because this club will be for long in the shadow of United. You know, mm -hmm. and I think uh, with all this desire, this our you know our our director, our chairman, Cardun and Sheik Mansun, they have been really, really, really ambitious. You know, they want to build a massive club. They want to make this club better than any club in the world. You can see the facility we have it. And I think, like I'm saying, there's like this year, we don't have an excuse. We've been a new fantastic player coming, join us to make the club, the team, we could very uh, great story. And yeah, we're looking forward and we're hungry for, for, for success this year. Man City have come into the Premier League, the money's been spent, yeah. you've won some trophies, been successful in England, the challenging, but Europe's kind of been a step too far, it seems, up to now. How do you see that going this year? Pretty, pretty good, because I think when you see the team set or when you see the mentality, because in the dressing, when you see all the lads, I think, if you are, I, I will be honest, you know, I think it's the few times, few years I saw all the players be commit and focus, you know, because they all want something, they all work for something, you know. When you see all the game we've been playing, when you see those guys, how do they fight for each other? I was thinking about doing well. Maybe in, the, in this season we're going to find difficult team, we're going to progress, we're going to create us a lot of problems. But I think until the end we're going to... played with some great players in your time here at Man City, at Barcelona and various other clubs. Who is the best player you've played with? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you know it. You know it. <laughs> Definitely, but, you know Messi, Messi. But why? Tell me why. Give me something that, that we don't know. What's he like in training? Is he the same in training? Does he do some crazy stuff in training? What, any stories? Yeah, but I, I will tell you something. You know, I hear about, I hear about Evra sometimes because yeah, I'll be able to talk with him quite few days, quite few times. Uh, with Talos Tevez, I was. Well, he said Cristiano Ronaldo is a type of player working hard, but Messi is different. Messi is like you know, genius. It's like people. He's natural. type of guy. Yeah, natural. You know. And the training is always easy. It's always guys who is very good with the ball. He's will never do crazy things. He's will never work hard. You know what I mean? It's always especially in the in the game, you know, football game. It's this type of type of Aguero, for example. Because Aguero in the training ground is normal. He's just clever, look at around, just try to be uh, to be easy, just try to reserve himself for the game. Uh, like Carlos Tevez, you've been You've been working with Carlos Tevez as well. He doesn't move in training. <laughs> when you get here on the team in training, definitely you're going to lose it. <laughs> but in the game, you, you can, you know, it's different, deeply. Because you can see the mentality of the guys, these guys. they totally dedicated in the game, you know. In the training, yeah, they just sharpen us, just learn, just to be fit. But for them, the game is, is everything. So Aguero, Messi and Tevez are all the same like that, they just relax in training. Because the mentality in England, yeah. like when I was training, I had to train 100% all the time. Yeah, because yeah. I thought when I get to the game, if I've not been training hard, I can't just switch it on. Yeah, definitely. The it's, mentality is different. As me as well, because I'm a big lad, I need to move a little bit to keep my, my weight good, to be fit and if, and if feel, and as well, I need to feel a little bit, you know, where I'm in my heart, moving hard, you know. That's why sometimes I try to run everywhere, but when you get the clever player like, you know, Silva, Aron, Sami, you know, 
now De Bruyne is coming Sterling. I will not get the ball. I just have to be clever and trust to anticipate, you know. Otherwise, I'll be running like crazy. So is that what you're going to do? You're going to try and just maybe just shield the back four a little bit more, more defensive responsibility? Is that your job this season, Moz, you think? And just let the attackers play? Yeah, definitely. You know, because now we have a more option in front. And what I need, what I said before, I always want to help the team. And if you're the manager, depend on the type of manager want me to play. Because last year, the first year he been here, uh, the first year the manager been here, he was telling me like, yeah, yeah I know, I know how you, how you can play offensively. I want you to play more offensive. And uh, this year, he told me to to switch on and switch off, doing something differently. And me, I'm a type of player. I can adapt in everything. You know what I mean? And the players, the, the manager know me, and the previous managers know me as well. I'm a player who. I can, you know, it's not easy to find a player can adapt and you, play you any, that. you know what I mean? That all your career. And that's why I was working on that. Try to improve, try to, you know, because we don't know. I never try a keeper, but maybe one day <laughs> I will try it. <laughs> <laughs> Who for you is the, the hardest player you've come up against or the best player you've played against? I think Messi again. <laughs> because, <laughs> <laughs> because last year we, we played against him in Champions League. This previous two years we played against Barcelona Ooh, he champion. Was good that yeah. Oh, he had me off my seat. He was more than good. Not I think. Max, yeah, Max. I think. Yeah, because when I was coming close to him, I was looking. Oh, this guy don't want to put the ball on because <laughs> my father, my brother, my families they were looking at me. They were yeah, even him. And the rest of them, when we get in there, he was loving. He said, "Yeah, look, I will put this guy. I will put Canyo. Canyo is like expression in Spanish. I will put the True. ball on his leg, you know, and throw on his leg and." You done Milner? You done everyone? He got a girl Silva as well. And me when I was coming close, I said, no, no, please. <laughs> <laughs> so even Messi's in the change room laughing about these things. Because when yeah. I was younger and playing, yeah. all I cared about is if you could get one quick Megs. Yeah. And he's doing the same. Yeah, this guy is brilliant. He's unbelievable. Him and Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho, Ronaldinho I think with Ronaldinho, like Messi, they was the same. They were always in tech. Hey, guys, be careful. If you come too close, <laughs> look, be aware of me. You said, no, you come, you put and it goes. And he's, he's the player who's very quick, you know what I mean? Can change his, uh, very quick. Messi's better than Ronaldo, yeah? Wow, they're two great players, Rio, to be honest with you, two great players. But Messi's type of genius, you know? Gene Messi is very good, it's very, very good. Play so, with him, is fantastic. Against him, he's the worst. So, so give me, in today's football, give me your, your top five players today. Can you give me them? Oh, Not whoa, including whoa, yourself. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> no. Bro, you, you know, I don't want to include myself. Take yourself yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think for me, the first year, we goes... Number one. Messi. Number two, Cristiano. Number three, Aguero. Aguero is good. Aguero is fantastic. Number four, yeah. Ooh, brilliant, brilliant player. Gareth Bell is good. It's good, fantastic player as well, yeah. And uh, number five, phew. I don't want to sit my enemy, but <laughs> I love him. I love him. Maybe, yeah, he's a brilliant player. He's a good player, so, you know. Mm. <sighs> yeah, Rune. Rune. Really? Rune is a good player. <laughs> top five. That's a good top five. I like yeah. it. So this summer, just talk about a little bit off the pitch, because yeah. we know you as a player. Off the yeah. pitch, not many people know much about you. This summer you was in Kenya. Yeah, yeah. Just definitely. explain what you was doing in, in Kenya. Oh, yeah, I think... Uh, as African, as uh, guys who want, who want to, you know, help my country to grow, on, you know what I mean, and they, they continue to grow, on, you know, those things is very important. I've been doing, I've been doing that a lot. When the Premier League is finished, I just have quick, maybe five or one weeks going there, or maybe more than that, ten days going there, just to try to help, do something about the charity. Because it's the UN. Um... Yeah, UN, and I do things about the elephant. You know what I mean? Try to. Tell people I vote to kill those animals you know, because elephant, yeah, is is the emblem of my country as well. And you know, those animals have been killing stupidly and badly in in Africa, around Africa, you know, and make does make me sad sometimes. You know, I have a strong voice. Why? Because you know, people around Africa take me as an idol, as like a drug bar, like Samuel too. And something is something I have to do. It's not always only about those unit you know, situation. It's about different things as well. Mm -hmm. But me, I'm the type of people, guys. I'm very calm. Is between me and my God. You know, I do things in charity and myself mm -hmm. quietly, and then uh, because I don't want any noisy things around. Mm -hmm. I don't want publication things like that. Because as a Muslim, as my father was saying before, you know, when you do things, you have to do between you and your God, and that's all.
So do you feel a responsibility? Because I, I read up as well that you're a special consultant for FIFA on, on yeah. racism as well. Yeah. Um, you was with Lowe Dunk trying to uh, organise a game, yeah. the Premier, Premier All-Stars against the rest yeah. of the world in Africa. Yeah. So do you feel a responsibility for, you, for the continent as well to, oh. to, to speak and to let people know what's happening there? That's brilliant, you know what I mean? I think uh, I've, been, I've been in touch with, uh, with my brother. He's playing in basketball, you know, and uh, yeah, we, we've been talking about bringing the ABA, African NBA to play in uh, South Africa. And I think uh, I was thinking about why we don't do the Premier African player, you know, doing in Africa as well. We don't know. I think... Let's do it, man. That's brilliant. I, I want it, but, you know, myself, I can't, you know what I mean? I need support. I need people around to take it seriously, you know, because there's going to be massive things. Because African people love football. African people, they care about football, you know what I mean? For them, football is something massive, you know. It's life. It's life, yeah, how you said, you know, because we are, when I go down there, I, I can see how people, they adore me. They take me like, you know, different guys. Sometimes I try to tell them I'm normal like them. He said, no, you can't say that. Yeah. For us, you are like God. I said, no, don't take me like that. He said, yeah. But I think bring these things to them, I think it's going to be, for them, it's going to be you bring, if I can say that, God to them. Mm. <laughs> massive, massive. I hope it's going to, I will make it. So you settle here, do you think you'll, you'll settle in England when you retire? you think you'll be here in England? I love it. I love it. I would love it to be there because I've been around, around Europe, around the world. I, for my kids, I think, brilliant, I will settle in England. That's why I've been a lot of ch chat about me and in the, the past, like I will move on. But I'm a type of person like, you know, now I'm not a young guy. I have a family to, to run up. I have the people to run up. I have the f friends close to me. I've been settled in Manchester for long now, I think quite long, five years now. And what I love is, to be honest with you, is, is the accent, you know, mm. because my family, my kids, I've been taking the Manchester accent, you know, because in England you have a lot of, lot of characters. Sometimes it's difficult for me to understand. Mm. When I speak with a guy from London, from Birmingham, from Manchester, is the accent is different. And f yeah, last year I've been talk. my kids was coming. Sometimes we talk in French, but I was talking English and I was, wow. I, take, I called my wife, I said, what is he talking? She <laughs> said, oh, listen, he's talking. I said, he's talking in a Manchester accent. And it was, it was brilliant, mm. I love that. Good. Hey, listen, it's been a pleasure. Me too. Thank you very much. You're welcome, me, bro. Good, Good man. Take care. Thank you, bro. <laughs>